favorite time today. I get to introduce our speaker. And um, this morning, oh, just lost her. Uh -oh. She was there. Okay, we'll let her come back on. I'll tell you some stories before she comes on. Um, she, she's my cousin, Diane. And um, I, she is 10 months and some days younger than me, but that hasn't stopped us from being sisters. Um, and we've had so many adventures from um, family summer canoe trips that are stories within themselves. And she's very crafty and very intelligent. And she's gone on. Um, she uh, was born here in Michigan, and most of our family is here. Well, actually, no, we're all kind of spread out. But her brother's here and her sister's in Florida. And um, she has now blazed a trail to Colorado and is, um, she's a, a children's special needs yoga instructor. And she's working at Habitat for Humanity. And she's just an inspiration to me in giving and, and, and letting other people, you know, helping them. Um, so is she back? Yes. Okay, cool. I know, there she is. Hi. Um, and I'm very honored and excited. Um, she's going to be sharing with us, I'm sure, wonderful words of wisdom. And welcome via Zoom. <laughs> okay, okay. Hold on, Diane. We're going to get you on the big monitor. Okay. I'd like to introduce you today to my um, cousin, Diane. Um, she's, <laughs> she's there. <laughs> this is, okay, looking at myself is. okay, okay. Okay. Diane, yeah, there she is. There's my cousin, Diane. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you, cousin Reverend Lisa, for the invitation to speak today. And thank you for being my audience today. <clears throat> when I got the invitation to speak, I thought of the Center of Enlightenment's theme. I embraced this new day with hope, courage, and love to draw my talk from. So thinking of hope, I believe it's that no matter what happens, there is a presence that sustains. And courage is taking a leap to wade into waters of areas that are fearful. As Annie Lamont states, courage is fear that has said its prayers. And finally, love. My favorite saying by the Dalai Lama, the more you're motivated by love, the more fearless and free your action will be. And that is one I take with me every day. <clears throat> I'm gonna try and make it through this without any tears, but that's okay. There's tears of joy. Yep. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Instead of these topics, since there is so much to be said, I am choosing to talk about enlightenment. And when I think of the word enlightenment, I naturally think about spirituality. However, there's many ways a person can be enlightened and not enlightened like a light bulb going off, though that does happen. But the softer, more gentle messages that cross our paths every day and which help us navigate our ways. Messages that are like nudges, feelings, senses, thoughts, all play a part in being mindful of these nudges. <clears throat> My nudge happened Christmas Eve 2018 when I got into a serious accident with a semi or on the I-696-75 interchange. <clears throat> I luckily walked away without a scratch, but my mind was pretty messed up for a while. The accident made me evaluate my life, my person, and what I wanted my future to look like. Now, I wouldn't suggest getting into an accident to become enlightened, yet I would suggest listening to your inside, your heart, your head, your feelings, that most times 
gently let us know something needs to change. In, I chose Billy Joel because I look at life like a river. <clears throat> we have so many streams that make up our lives. Family, health, work, responsibilities. All of these create our river. And we know there are rocks, difficulties that come up to upset the flow. There's hidden logs and branches that may also cause disruption. And there's also gentle eddies that even on the sides that even though they're not part of the force of our daily life, they are still there. <clears throat> and they're still part of the body of water that is your life. One of my little side eddies was spiritualism. My spirituality has only developed in these last years since I've been in Colorado. I like the person I'm growing into. And we'd like to share a poem. It fills me with joy. Every time I read it, I might start the tears too. My spiritual counselor, Tom Stella here, even though he is a published author and has written many books, introduced me to this series of books called The Ten Poems. And he thought these books will enlighten me in different areas within my life and not just spirituality. <clears throat> the poem is called Last Night As I Was Sleeping by Antonio Machado. Last night as I was sleeping, I dreamt, marvelous air, that a spring was breaking out in my heart. I said, along which secret aqueduct, O water, are you coming to me? Water of a new life that I have never drunk. Last night as I was sleeping, I dreamt, marvelous air, that I had a beehive oof, here inside my heart and the golden bees were making white combs and sweet honey from my old failures. Last night, as I was sleeping, I dreamt, marvelous air, that a fiery sun was giving light inside of my heart. It was fiery because I felt warmth from a hearth and sun because it gave light and brought tears to my eyes. Last night, as I slept, I dreamt, marvelous air, <clears throat> that it was God I had here inside my heart. Where do we go when we dream, when we sleep? A third of our life is lived underground and deep down inside of us, a stream that will rise now and then to the surface, trailing visions into our waking. What if that stream has been watering us all the days of our life and we never knew it? Perhaps there is a life within a life, a blessedness that pours through our days and years and we barely suspect it. We spend most of our days immersed in the stories we take to be the stuff of our lives. Tale after tale of gain and loss consumes our attention for decades, often a lifetime, if we never wake up to that deeper current that is actually living in us all along, we shall end our days wondering what the flicker of our life was for. I dreamt to further talk about this poem. Mikado goes on and I'm going to read some of his words. Last night as I was sleeping, I dreamt, marvelous air that a spring was breaking out in my heart. You can almost feel that sensation in the chest as you hear those lines. Fresh water breaking out through all the old crustaceans. Our habitual stances, attitudes, fears, our hurts gather over a lifetime. Like layers of lime in which obstruct the flow of the Milky Way that is continually wanting to pour through your heart and into our days. Your soul, after all, is not yours. It is not a property to be owned, but a stream that comes through you that flows and is never less. I said, along which secret aqueduct, O water, are you coming to me, water of a new life that I have never drunk? drunk? The origins of the springs is not in your own heart. Rather, its waters are carried there by some secret aqueduct from a source beyond all your knowing. You are already joined then to the world, to the life of the world, even if you have not known or felt it. There, all the while, in the midst of your loneliness, your suffering and doubts, in the midst of your slumber, that stream has been coursing through you. I dreamt, marvelous air, that I had a beehive here inside of my heart 
and the golden bees were making white combs and sweet honey from my old failures. Imagine the possibility that every single turn of events, no matter how dark or disappointing the outcome, can in some circuitous way be the raw material for something that eventually surfaces with the sweetness of honey. Mm -hmm. Oh. Our failures can soften us, render us more permeable to worlds we may never have uncovered if we have always met with success in the world of action. The heart, like the great, is prone to delivering its harvest in the same moment that it appears to be crushed. The, the beehive in your heart is humming precisely because of those failures and creating sweet honey. I dreamt, marvelous error that a fiery sun was giving light inside of my heart. It was fiery because I felt warmth as from a hearth and what and sun because it gave light and brought tears to my eyes. The sun, the source of all life, springs eternal in the spirit. Makata believes the human heart and solar source are one and the same. He becomes the source of his own warmth and light. And in seeing, he sheds tears. Tears of what? Recognition, perhaps, to finally see himself in his true light. Tears of relief, then, of wonder, gratitude, and joy. Ricardo has one more step to make with us. The greatest, most marvelous heir of all. He dreams that spirit is here inside of his heart. He dares to leap over metaphors altogether and say directly what he has been inferring all along. You are your own source. Drink from your own well. Live by your own undying light. Not the light of reason or the conscious mind, but by the light of the world that streams through your daily life. These books have been very helpful in uncovering the pieces within my spirituality that I'm looking to develop. This one is obviously going to speak to me the rest of my life, just because I love the way that it's, that it's written. I appreciate the opportunity to speak today. And I have one more thing to read. I have one more thing to read. And as you understood through the things that I have said, there's many quotes, uh, writings, thoughts that I keep up in my house that I am visually aware of every day. <clears throat> and this last little bit is just a piece of paper. I don't know where it came from, but it's a lovely little thought to finish, the, finish my speech with. <clears throat> Forgive who insulted you. Forgive yourself for being wrong. You will, do, you will do it again, for nothing living resembles a straight line. Certainly not this journey to and fro, zigzagging. <clears throat> you there, me here, making our own road onward as the snail does. Yes, for some time we might contemplate, not the tiger, not the eagle or the grizzly, but the snail who always remembers that wherever you find yourself, Mm. that wherever you find yourself eating is home the center where you must make your love and wherever you wake up is here the right place to be where we start again thank you so much and i'm done I'm sending you a great big hug. Thank Yay, you. So I got it. <laughs> oh, I'm so proud of you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you for letting me speak today. Thank you for speaking. Thank you for sharing that. That was amazing. The poems, the thoughts. I, it, I'm in awe. Um, and I'm so glad we recorded it. So I can watch it again and again and again and again. Um, I would like to now go into our tithing portion of our 
um, service. Uh, first, let us start with our abundance principles on page two of our prayer cards. Oh, I'm all kerfuffle. Um, number one, I believe that as a co-creator with Mother, Father, God, I have the power and the responsibility to create a life that is in direct alignment with divine will. I request and allow that union at this moment to improve my life. I understand that the results of my limited thinking are of my own doing and that the problems and lack I experience are my responsibility to transform through right thinking followed by right action. I forgive myself for perceived wrongdoings in thought, action, deed, and intention. I now make known my specific request to Mother, Father, God, my partner in co-creation, and I am grateful for all that I receive. Now we'll take a moment and have a request. For Mother, Father, God. No request is too small. No request is too big. Do you want to hear them out loud? Oh, sorry. That's okay. Mm -hmm. And number five. I now have a covenant with Mother, Father, God, in which it is agreed that I have an abundance of all things necessary to live a successful and happy life. All right. And then what, if you could take your tie in your, let me get my hand up, in your left hand, cover it with your right, and repeat the offering prayer with me. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. And this morning, Reverend David Shaw will be our tithing collector. Okay, if everyone can put your intentions up here. Infinite intelligence, Mother, Father, God, Holy Spirit, thank you for this offering this morning in a monetary form or an intention or on Zoom. Bless this bounty for the center of enlightenment and let us use this for the betterment of the church, the people it serves, and the ones it will serve. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Reverend David. You're welcome. Okay, we're going to have one more song. And Diane chose this one also. It's from Otis Redding. Sitting in the morning sun, I'll be sitting when the evening comes, watching the ships roll in, and then I watch them roll away. Again. Yeah, I'm sitting on the dock of the bay, watching the tide roll away. Sitting on the dock of the bay, wasting time. 
I left my home in Georgia Headed for the Frisco Bay I've had nothing to live for I look like nothing's gonna come my way So I'm just gonna sit on the dock of the bay Watching the tide roll away I'm sitting on the dock of the bay Wasting time Look like nothing's gonna change Everything still remains the same what ten people tell me to do So I guess I'll remain the same Sitting here resting my bones And this loneliness won't leave me alone This two thousand miles I roam Just to make this dock my home Now I'm just gonna sit at the dock of a bay Watching the tide roll away Ooh, Sitting on a dock of the bay Wasting time Awesome. Now, I'll start with announcements. Good. <laughs> Usually I just go into spirit communication, but this morning we have a lot of announcements. I'm so excited. Okay, to start with, I would like to announce that some of the education committee got together and we scheduled out classes for the rest of the year. I'm so excited. Our first class will be discovering your five guides in April, right? Yeah, April, um, with Reverend Carol Willis. Um, this was a class that was taught by Reverend Kathleena, who this morning, Richard, was um, setting, up. setting up and in the first pew where Reverend Kathleen used to sit, and he didn't know this, there was light and a like a heart circle around it. Looked like a person sitting there. Um, She's here. <laughs> and then when Reverend Kathleen passed, Reverend Marie took over that class. And then she moved to Florida this end of last year, the very end. And, and now Reverend Carol's going to teach it. I think that's so, so cool. Ooh. And then we've also set up Saturday workshops. The first Saturday of the month will be workshops. And I'll be doing the first one in May. And it will be mindful meditation. And so we're very excited. And um, Reverend Keith is looking at his schedule for the mediumship class, possibly in the summer. So we're, that's tentative right now, but we're so excited. <laughs> and there's a reason for that also, because... There are some preliminary classes to prepare you for mediumship that you need to take first. Mm -hmm. um, so we try to schedule some of those things in early on so that when summer or fall comes along and Reverend Keith is ready, you've already got the prerequisites taken care of. Mm -hmm. um, and it'll work much better for you yeah. Yeah. than trying to go in blind. Yeah. So that's part of our reasoning for this. Yeah, but that was very exciting. I mean, popped them out. That was great. Mm -hmm. um, next Sunday, um, our um, chairperson, 
will be Reverend David Shaw. And his speaker will be his lovely wife, Patty Shaw. Patty Shaw is an author and a local businesswoman. And I always love when she speaks. I could just listen to her all the time. Okay, now I'm going to do the other um, mess, uh, other announcements. Um, choir date, the next choir is March 6th, and that's tomorrow. And it's the first and third Mondays. So I'm excited. I may bop in one Sunday, one Monday, and take some pictures for the choir page. We're and we are on. working on music for Easter Sunday. Mm -hmm. And Reverend Carol and I will be doing the service on Easter Sunday again. It might just be our thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this will be the second year in a row. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it might be, just might be our thing. Mm -hmm. um, March 10th, the Women of Enlightenment. Um, I will be hosting, and it, the topic will be assertiveness. And now that we're able to have food, um, we usually meet about 6.30, visit, munch, and then our discussion starts at 7, whatever we do. Our craft night, our discussion, our movie night starts at 7. I've got to keep these in order. Um, the PR committee uh, meets every two weeks. Our past meeting on March 6th, we were unable to do, but I passed out homework. If anyone like would like homework, let me know. Um, it's about press releases and getting information out to the media about what we do and who is our speaker, like Patty Shaw. I mean, she's a local businesswoman and she's an author and we'd like to get that out there. So we're going to learn about that. Uh, March 17th, which I know is St. Patrick's Day, mm -hmm. but we're going to have fun here if you'd like to come. It's trivia night. We'll do teams and we'll have lots of fun and there'll be prizes. And then that Sunday, March 19th, will be our member ceremony where we, we renew and install our members. Because just like our board of directors and our ministers, we all have a stake in the church and how it runs and how it works and, and how we come together. Um, also, our, we have an ab abundance banks project. Um, what we have is we have some jars up here and you put your loose change in for the month and then you bring it on the last Sunday of the month and there's affirmations and stuff. It's really nice. We've been building a fund for um, a new roof, a new parking, maybe a new place. We'll see. Speaking of parking, um, the parking announcement is that because we have limited parking, if you're physically able, Please park a block south, a block north, a block west, or further on down the block um, so that those that are physically handicapped or need to be closer to the building to get out, that would be awesome. And our last announcement is we are a hugging church. We love to hug. If you're uncomfortable with huggers, just let us know. No judgment. We just like to hug. Okay. All right. Now, now we'll get to spirit communication. Um, our spirit communication is a very important part of spiritualism. Um, it is our mediumship. And this morning, our mediums will be myself and Reverend Carol Willis. And I would like to. Um, bring up to the podium first, Reverend Carol Willis. Good morning. Um, I'm Reverend Carol, and I will be working with my gatekeeper, Hector, my joy guide, Nightingale, and my 